We are officially live, man. What is up, man? Nolly Williams, dude. I've been I've been excited about this one, man, for a week, and uh, I, I know that um, I'm really a lucky guy to have um, you on today and to be able to drop some knowledge. You are fresh off a a Las Vegas visit to the NLA conference, and hopefully, we can talk a little bit about that. But Nolly, man, welcome. How are you? Thanks, Mike. Hey, I'm glad to be here, man. It's it's uh, another exciting day another great day for real estate and uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here that's great man so like there's so much i want to talk to you about but why don't we start with like um let's give a quick uh, background check on you why don't you for those who have been hiding under a rock for the last couple of years and don't know you man you're a best-selling author you've done so much but give us a quick bio on you man yeah so um you know i was born in new york uh raised in los angeles Came to Austin, Texas when I was 18 years old. I'm 49 uh, today. Not today. Happy birthday, man. Not happy birthday, but just I'm uh, right now I'm 49. Okay, all right. Close enough. <laughs> close enough. Close enough. But um, I got, you know, I've been an entrepreneur since I was about 12 years old, maybe 13. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I sold stuff door to door, sold stuff in school, uh, sold candy in school. Um, when I was 22, started my very first company. And by the time I was 29, I'd made my first million dollars. Um, I had 14 employees, uh, 18 um, recording artists on, the, on a record label. And then uh, I went bankrupt. <laughs> by the time I was 33, I lost everything. Um, and I had to, had to figure out what to do next. And real estate had my, had my name written on it. <laughs> so I got in the game in, thir in, uh, in 2003. I got in the real estate game. And I took the listings. I mean, I started listings like like K one. Um, something that just occurred to me, Mike. I, I never realized this um, until I, I did this class in in L A. and I was preparing for it. Is that I never actually uh, advertised or marketed for buyer lead. Like I never, I've never marketed for buyer leads ever. Yeah. Um, I just did all listings, like probably you know maybe to a fault. Who knows? But. Uh, but by focusing on listings, I had all the, you know, I, I've always had all the buyers I could handle, you know. So um, I get, when I got in, in, into real estate, I took uh, 21 listings my first 74 days in the business. And I just, just went full steam ahead. Yeah. <laughs> But I know most of the people that are tuning in today, man, they are tuning in because either they're at a point, either they're new in the business, they want to learn how to take more listings, or they're at a point in their business where they need to learn how to take more listings. And I know you and I are are really going to dig more into that, man. But there, there's a lot there in just your background story. So what I love to talk about, man, is like, I know like for you, um, when you talk about, you know, becoming a millionaire at 29 and losing it all in your mm -hmm. early 30s, man, what were some of the lessons you got from that, man, What and that's, that are still with you today that kind of molded and shaped you? Well, you know, um, I was I was kind of in in a uh, I call it a drunken stupor, um, <laughs> even though I didn't drink. Uh, I thought it would always be this way, like like making one hundred fifty grand a month was normal. I thought that that it, it was it would all, that that was just life. Yeah. And um, what I've learned is that you have to be really wise with the choices you make. One of the things that I didn't do that I could have done at that point was uh, become debt free, which I've now done. But at that point. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't wise enough, you know, I wasn't start, uh, smart enough to um, to make that. I think I have my phone on. Let me, actually, you know what I need to do? Let me, just so we don't get disturbed. Hold on one second. Yeah, you know what, man? We've had it all. We've had dogs barking. We've had window shades fall. We've had phones ring, man. We've and that, That's the beauty of being live, man. So my phone's are going crazy today. So, <laughs> but, but I tell you, I learned, I learned so much, Mike. Um, one of the things I learned was just to be humble. Um, and that's a lesson that because I, I built up a lot of pride. You know, I thought, man, look at me. You know, I'm you know, in my 20s and, you know, I've got the, the seven bedroom house and all this other stuff. And, you know, it, it was um, it creeps in on you, the ego and all that stuff. You, you know, you have to let that stuff go. Yes, and then you, you also one of the big things that I learned is um, how to pay it forward and give back. That's that's what I like so much about you, Mike, is that. You know, you're wired to do, I mean, every human being really is wired to do it, but we don't always follow that passion. And I remember 
when I was in my um, 20s and even in my early 30s, I never wanted to teach people what I knew because I didn't want them to, I didn't want to teach the competition. I didn't, you know, it was a scarcity mindset. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So I, I learned, I learned tons of stuff. And, and actually a lot of the stuff that I, that I have learned, actually everything that I do learn, I try to teach um, to others because that's what keeps us, when we empty it out, that's what, how we can learn more. You know, I'm yeah. always surprised at agents that um, even some agents that I've had on my team, you know, I'll fill up their plate and then they eat a couple of things and then they come back for another helping. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you finish that plate I just gave you. Yeah, um, man. Listen, I, I'm in I'm in complete agreement with you. Yeah. I, I could not like my my personal opinion is that we are here for one thing, and that is to learn and to grow yeah. and then to teach others. Absolutely. And so the more we become and then the money shows up as a byproduct of that. Absolutely. So the, the money flows to value. Yeah. And, and so that, that that is that's so cool that that I, I think and you learn that along your journey. Like right, when you're young, you don't think like that. No, I mean, you, don't. you have that scarcity mentality, right? Where you don't want to share. Right. But then you learn. Then what happens is you start to learn. Um, and there's some biblical principles here too. You know, the more you give, the more you the, you can't outgive God. I love. I've yeah. always loved hearing that, man. Yeah. And so, yeah. You know. I, I, I think you've definitely lived your life that way, you know, and, and certainly it, it is showing up uh, more now than ever before for you because, you know, you continue to give and you continue to get. Um, so why don't we do this, man? Um, the, the one thing I know about you, uh, obviously, is that you are a listing guy, right? And I, the one thing I know about the marketplace that we're in is that people need listings, right? Yeah. And so you didn't when you got into this business, you didn't know any different, man. Like you somebody told you, hey, you need to go get listings, kid. And you just went out and got listings, right? You didn't sign up for internet buyer, buyer you didn't sign up for Boomtown or Commissions Inc. or anything like that. You just like put signs in yards and you knew that the buyers would call those signs, right? And you'd be able to convert those um, either to buy those buyers to buy in your house or buying another house, right? Correct. Correct. But, what I want to understand is like most people, like there's so much noise these days. People just don't like that message gets lost. So yeah. how did that, how were you able to receive that and then put that into action? Well, I have to give credit. You know, when, when I got my, before I got my license, I read Millionaire Real Estate Agent, MREA. Mm -hmm. um, I read that book. Um, I didn't join Keller Williams. I joined uh, Prudential uh, and I was there. I was at Prudential for 74 days. Took 21 listings and left. <laughs> went to uh, went to Remax and uh, and I joined. I joined at the time it was the number one brokerage in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and um, I was the you know low low man on totem pole coming in. You know, I mean, we had agents that were I mean just incredible um, at that time. Some of the biggest names in real estate, and um, and then eventually I became one of the top, uh, actually the top agent on the on the um, you know, the roster, if you will. I, you know, I, I love competition. It, to me, it's fun. I play it like a game, you know. Um, I mean, truthfully, you and I know there really is no such thing as competition. Uh, but it, but the, but the game is so much fun to me. Um, but yeah, I, I hit the ground running. One of the things that I learned in the music game, the music industry, that, that people just, they hear me talk about it, but they, they, they don't sometimes take it to heart, I, I feel is that you you have to become well known and i was i've always been really good at doing that um in the music business i was good at it um and then when i got into real estate i, I just kept doing it and when when you're well known people you stick out in people's mind they'll seek you out when you're and, and the other thing that i that i bring to the table that um is a bit of a handicap because i don't have any d okay so that's that's a bit of a handicap for me because technically speaking, my, I'm not supposed to be a lister. I mean, when I, when I take the ABA or the uh, KPA or the or the disc profile, um, I don't make I don't make the cut, man. When it comes to being a mega agent, you know, I I, I score I score like in the in lower than the in the ten percent range, you know. Yeah. So with a handicap, when you're naturally handicapped, and we've seen this happen with people that have physical handicaps. Other areas will rise up to compensate, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and they can still hit you know get get in the game and make it happen. So what I what I teach is really applicable to any real estate agent. Any agent can be successful if they really have the desire to. Mm -hmm. 
So what I want to know about you, man, is, is, you know, so those eight, th those areas, you're not a D, right? And we know like if, if you look at most top agents, right, they have some sort of, they, most of them are DIs or, or yeah. IDs, right? They, 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 they have a, that, that driver and then they also have that need to, to want to be liked in most cases or, or they're, you know, the quote unquote, what we call people person. But so for you, if, if you found out like you weren't that, that never, you never used that as a handicap and you probably used it as, um, as ammunition to, you know, to continue to, to grow and nurture those other areas to get stronger in. So knowing that, um, and you probably, the, the funny thing is you probably didn't know that when you started listing, right? Because no, in this business, we're not taking, usually we don't know what we don't know and we're not taking personality profiles. Right. But you, you, so, so at some point you found that out. But what I what I, I guess what I want to know is how kn knowing now that you weren't that driver, uh, yeah. that you weren't that high D, how in the heck did you how in the heck did you have that ambition or that drive to go out and get in front of people and list their properties on that level? Because you were you were I mean, you like you said, I mean, you were one of the one of the top agents in that whole area. Yeah. So, so basically what happens is, um, and this is why I tell people, don't take your disc, pro know your disc profile, know your personality strengths, but don't take it as a death sentence. Um, just know, because you have to understand where you're weak so that you can partner with others who are strong in the areas where you're not. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know at first. I mean, but, I, but I did know that I, I should be taking listings. So, um, it's just that nobody told me I wouldn't be good at it. <laughs> so, so I just went out and did it. Um, and, I, and like you said, I found out later. But the truth is, if you if you exercise biblical principles, um, people teach it as the power of the subconscious mind. I mean, there's a lot of different ways, ways that people teach it. But when you when you go out there with the belief and the faith that you can succeed and you can succeed high. See, what happens when you introduce fear and doubt into the equation? It begins to undermine any success that you possibly could have, mm -hmm. and that's why even with my agents now, I teach them: you've got to maintain a high level of belief, and a high and and the, and the word believe means to fully commit to. Yeah. You've got to be sold out, like 100% believe. Like I knew that this was my calling. I knew this was where God put me. Um, and and the other thing too, Mike, is that I have my SC is very high. Mm -hmm. So a person with a with an SC that's very high. Um, can be like it's more like an engineer methodical right. so i'm a teacher so when i went to a listing appointment i just did like a little seminar like i like to go out and teach now i do three hour seminars well when i went to a listing appointment i did a 30 minute seminar on why you know what what you should look for in an agent why you should list with me and what we need to do to get your home sold. that's yeah. what i would teach you during my little 30 minute seminar, you know, uh, but, but a D could have just gone in and said, Hey, here's the paperwork. Here's what I'm going to do. Sign here. I couldn't do that because it's just, it's outside of my wheelhouse. So I just encourage people, whatever you're good at or, or whatever your style is, you can take it to that highest degree, you know, um, and, and succeed at that high level. So for you, man, what, where like when you got into the business and we all see this shift, right? The, the, usually the shift is, is we get into this business. We have to, it's, it's mostly a grind, right? And, mm -hmm. Unless you have a, an unusually big network. Um, like you, like if you get into the business and you're Terrell Davis, for instance, who, yeah. who, who, who joined the XP, right? Yeah. I mean, I think people, he's built up credibility. He's built up influence from his career in football. So right people would naturally be attracted to do business with him. Right. But somebody like you or me, we just get into the business, right? It's like, no one knows us from Adam. Right. So what we have to do is like, for me, for instance, I just, I, I got on the phones and just grinded the phones, man, and just continually set appointments. But then you see that there's a shift at some point where that's still, it should be a, a, a part of your business, um, but it doesn't have to be as big a part of your business because what happens is the referrals start to pick up right from your past client base. And that's usually the natural evolution. Is that how you started as well? So when I started, yeah, pretty much. I mean, so I, the guy was really looking out for me because when I joined Prudential, I, I had a mentor um, that, I mean, he wasn't really technically my mentor, but he was just there in the office and he was cool dude. And he would just tell me stuff. And, yeah. and, um, and, you know, when we learn, every human being is like a sponge, 
But uh, what happens, Mike, is that they get saturated with knowledge. You know, and teaching is great. I love to teach. I love to train. I love to coach. I love to mentor. But a person can only accept so much before they become, they become overwhelmed because the information is it's a saturation point. You yeah. can't learn anymore. When you're saturated, you can no longer learn. What you've got to do is implement what you've learned in order to ex absorb more of the of more knowledge. And so what I would do, he would teach me and then I would go do it the next day <laughs> so that within a week I would be teaching to somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. and just from that, I was able I got into expireds was pretty much the first thing I did was within my first week or so in the business. I got into expireds. Um, I, I figured out how to get a farm together. So I started uh, marketing to a farm. And I would have vendors pay for the postage and everything like that. I would pick, have them piggyback because mm -hmm. uh, in, in the music business, we were so used to getting sponsors for everything. Right. Yeah. Um, and then and then I would work the sphere of influence to a degree. But we had just moved to an area that I didn't really know anybody when I first got in the game. So yeah. um, that was the sphere of influence was tough for me. So so but I was really good at marketing, you know, and um, my whole thing was you know, um, free consultation. I was just pushing the free consult. I mean, everybody does a free consultation, but I didn't see a lot of agents marketing that, you know, so I said, Hey, thinking about thinking about selling your home with a question mark list with knowledge, you know, get more money, selling less time, free consultation. That was kind of my whole, my whole thing. Yeah. And I had a lot of people that would just were curious about what their home was worth or whatever. And I'd meet with them and they would get excited about the idea of selling their home. Yeah. That's great, man. And, and so, what what I want people to hear there too is that um, when you're do, when you're doing mailings, like it, a mailing is not something you do one time and you expect results, mm -hmm. right? You, you understood that and you stayed with it, and, and you were rewarded because of that. But you had these. The funny thing is, is you know sometimes people will tune in and they're expecting like a, a magic bullet, right, or they're a magic pill, right, that they can eat. But the funny thing is, I bring all these people on that are really uber successful, right? And they they're doing some form of these foundational principles, maybe in just a different way. You know what I mean? And so for you, you know, you decided you were gonna you were gonna you were gonna call expired because you knew one thing, right? You knew that that they were willing to hire a realtor and willing to pay a commission, right? So yeah. you figured, hell, I'll just call those people. And so that was one pillar of your business. And then that second pillar was I'm gonna do mailers, and then I'm gonna leverage my I'm going to leverage some of my vendor partners to, to help pay for that. Right. Right. Yeah. And so you did that consistently and you continued, you, that bet that helped you to build your listing inventory. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so like, so was that like the first couple years of your business? Is that where the most success came for you? Well, you know, like for example, Mike, if I was getting, if I was just to start again right now, I probably wouldn't even focus on expired because in our market expires would be, I mean, it'd be a, a down and dirty dog, that house, you know, if it was expired. Uh, yeah. But I would probably do old expires. So I'd go back to people that had expired maybe three years ago um, or maybe even longer, four years ago. You've got um, companies like Land Voice that will, will scrub those old expires for you. So yeah. I might do something like that. But, you know, here's, here's the, the thing. People, I, I really don't like to teach people specific tactics on how to get listings. But that's all I started teaching recently um, because I started my, I have a, you know, I have 25 agents. I joined EXP uh, January this year. Um, and since then I've attracted uh, about 25 agents and, and we have this thing called mentorship masters and they keep asking me like, how do I get listening? To how do I get listening? To I'm like, crap. It's like, and, and here's what I call it, Mike. I'm like, they, I call it now money. Yep. They need that now money. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. Cause my whole thing, Mike, has always been first you learn and then you earn mm -hmm. because doing the right thing, you know, doing the right things in the wrong order still doesn't achieve the success. Right. Right. So you could go out. I could teach you like, hey, go out and do this, do door knocks, uh, do, do inspire, do all that. And then you, you achieve a measure of success. And then guess what happens? Now you have a serious problem with leverage and other issues because you never really learned the game properly. You know? Yeah. So, so um, when I was in NLA uh, last uh, last week, uh, Next Level Agents Conference, I taught the 27 ways to generate listing leads, like right now. And in okay. fact, I just, I just uh, wrote this book right here called Triple My Listings. Um, and it's, it's basically 27 marketing ideas for free seller listing leads. So because this is this stuff to me, 
my, to be honest with you, this is the stuff that people want. That's the reason why I wrote it. I yeah, actually sure. wrote, it, wrote it for my group because they kept hitting me up like, man, we want, we want to be. And, and so I started learning a principle and that is it's hard to teach broke people. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to teach hungry people. Yeah. And Jesus understood that. Mike, you know, people were hungry. They listened to him. He said, man, here's some fish and chips. You yeah. know, it, eat till your heart's content and then let's get back into the training. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so I started teaching my group and um, I had one of my members just picked up three listings last week. I had another gal I just talked to in my group. Um, she's just picked up uh, two listings. One's over a million dollars. So I, I'm learning now, like instead of just withholding, the secrets and tips because a master wants to teach everything in, in sequence, like yeah. master these principles. And then I'll teach you how to build this like a hundred plus a hundred listings a year business. Yeah. But, but what I'm learning in this market, Mike, with, with agents getting started, they need a little bit of both. Okay. Bit of both. So, so this book right here, if people want to, cause we, we probably won't have the time to get into all the little, you know, tricks and, and stuff. So this is a free book that people can get at triplemylistings.com. Um, you pay the shipping, we mail it out to you. It's about a hundred pages of nothing but how to get leads. But here's here's the thing you got to remember. You want to you want to focus on every single day. This is this is one thing that I've done since the be beginning of my career is time blocking. Mm -hmm. Every single day from nine to eleven or nine to noon, okay, you should be doing nothing but lead generation. And people are like, you know, there's five excuses that agents give me of why they don't do this. But there is no excuse that's valid because if you want to feed your family, you've got a time block for lead generation. And it doesn't matter how many leads. I mean, I did my time block this morning from seven to nine. I do mm -hmm. it every single day. Even when I was in Vegas last week, even when I go when I when I was in Bahamas the week before, I do my time blocking every single day. I even do it on vacation. I don't you don't have to, but but for me, I, I time block every single day for lead generation. And I I I've never stopped that principle. Do you use a calendar? Yeah. Yeah. A calendar to do it? Do I use a calendar? Yeah. 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 So I, my, my time block is hard fixed into my calendar. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think, you know, what, what you'll find is, and we, we preach that too to our team and, yeah. and anybody that comes into our mentor circle. Certainly you want to use a calendar and, and like, we love those times too. We love, I mean, if you can jump on the phones at eight, you know, if you can, if you can get three good hours in, if you can yeah. give me two, I mean, if even if you can do it fine in every day and, and maybe do it again at four to six, yeah. uh, that, that, that is just going to pay. It, it will live, literally change your life. It will give you the life you want to live. You give me any, any agent comes to me and says, man, I'm not doing well. I'm not, you know, I'm not hitting my numbers. I'm you're not time blocked. I already know you're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and some people they're like, well, what do I say when I time block? Well, you know, th this other book that I wrote, which, which, you know, a lot of people already have this successful listings. Uh, I've got 95 scripts, so you know what to say, you know? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of good training out there. I mean, it's not, this, the training's not scarce. It's just a matter of sitting down and, and, and I call it a, um, I call it a lead generation bunker. You know, I think that's how Gary used to refer to it. Yeah. Um, you go into your bunker and you take everything you need in there with you. You got your water, your snacks, you don't come out, you don't emerge from that bunker until you hit your numbers, whatever your goals were for that day. Yeah. Um, and, and I do, now I do a two by four. So I do it uh, two hours a day, four days a week. Um, and I went to that because agents just wouldn't do, like I would be telling them like three days, three hours a day, five days a week, and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway. What do you think the disconnect is, Nolly, on why, why people won't do it? Well, I tell you what, um, I'm not sure because in the old days when, see, the, the disconnect is a misunderstanding that, um, that it actually leads to paychecks, you see? And, and, and if you don't get it real clear in your mind that a closing, you know, a paycheck occurs when you have a closing, right? Yeah. But a closing occurs when you have a pending, you know, a property under contract. Yeah. And, a, and, a, and a property under contract or a pending doesn't occur until you have a listing, you know, one active. You know, and the active, of course, doesn't have, happen until you get the signature on the listing agreement. And when the sig signature on the listing agreement doesn't happen until you get an appointment. And the appointment doesn't happen until you get a lead. And the lead doesn't happen until you lead generate. And the lead generation doesn't happen until you time block. And if you don't time block, guess what? You don't get a paycheck, period. 
time blocking equals paychecks and, and prospecting equals paychecks um, and not not prospecting equals pocket. Yeah. So if you if you don't if you don't um, time block every single day, you're not going to have what you want. Period. Yeah. So so one of the so what I'm hearing you say is if one if you're teaching one foundational principle, if somebody if a, if, a, if a young man or woman comes to you and says, Nolly, man, I just got into the business and uh, you know how do I go get listings? And you're telling them number one, you got a time block, right? Mm -hmm. Time block. Um, and, and number two, while during that time block, you want to lead generate, right? Yeah, yeah. And, so then, and, then people are like, well, what do I do during my lead generation? And that's why I wrote this with 27 ideas. You don't have to implement all of them. I say implement three or four or five of them. Um, things like, for example, start a YouTube channel. That's one of the ideas. Start a YouTube channel with a face. Basically, you start a Facebook uh, uh, group with a YouTube channel attached to it for your community. And then you just go out and interview people. You know, Doug's new donut shop. You've got the new um, wellness clinic. You know, they, those are popping up. 24 hour emergency clinics are popping yeah. up. All over. You know, interview the doctors there. So, I mean, any when you when you're basically the, the real estate mayor, you there shouldn't be anything that comes into your area without you being on the scene. Like, you know what's going on. Right. Yeah. So you the sushi restaurant, anything that happens in your area. And then it's real simple and easy to do Facebook ads around that that you get the ad, you know, the establishments to pay for. Hey, they can put two or three dollars a day toward Facebook app, you know, to boost that post of you doing a three or four minute video. Um, and I tell people, just pick out, just just get your your smartphone and just start being that man about town, that woman about town, and yeah. interviewing these establishments. And and then you create sort of a um, this this thing where people see you around town. And then I mean, if I sit down in front of a, a guy like you know a barbecue shack or whatever it might be. Yeah. And, I, and I've given in my book, you know, I've got a, a seller guide that I give sellers that looks like this. You know, it's the complete guide to selling your home. So I give I give the, the, the donut shop or the barbecue guy the, the copy of it the day before we meet. Yeah. And then when I sit down with him, you know, he's talking about what I do and I'm talking about what he does. Right. And so he's like and they're like, man, this guy's being endorsed by everybody. Like I could sit down with somebody literally if I just met them. And we just talk it up a little bit for like 10 minutes before we go on camera. And then I can say, I could tell him, I could say, uh, now, Mike, what do you think about what I do around what I'm interviewing you? You're going to say something positive about me. Right. And, and so there, there's, there's so many different tactics. That's just one of them, one of the techniques that I teach. But um, I, people always ask me, what are your favorite ones? You have to pick stuff to do that's in accordance with your personality profile. Like I'm, I'm not a door knocker even though that's some of the tactics I teach because it's just not my style. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've, I've never knocked a door and, and I sold over a thousand, I, I took over a thousand listings in less than 10 years. So you, you can do door knocking and that that's a strategy that works for a lot of people. You know, you can do cold call calling. You know, I've never done a cold call. <laughs> now I have yeah. called expires, which I don't, which I, I, I consider that a warm call. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, uh, so for you, I'm curious, man, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you, like, how do you, cause what, what I think some agents have the tendency to do is try to identify themselves as one way. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and for, for instance, like, well, I'm not, I, you know, they have these limiting beliefs. Well, I'm not good at making phone calls, right? They, right. they identify themselves as that. So they kind of just rule that out. How do people make the distinction between just flat out being lazy or actually not being good at something, right? You know, it, when you think about it, Mike, back in the in the olden times, we couldn't get away with a lot of the stuff we get away with now, because you lived in a village, and when you were in a village, you had you had the hunters had to go out on the hunt. Now, just imagine, they, and that that was a daily occurrence. Every single day, guess what? We need meat. We need food for the village. We need you to go gather berries, or whatever, whatever, you know, you bring back the food. Now, just imagine if 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 a couple of two or three times a week, they just decided not not to go hunt. I mean, that that's insane. Like it just it doesn't happen. That's something that you just do. And so that's how I look at you know my 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 daily time block. And honestly, if you do whatever you have to do, see what I what I like to do now is the stuff that's fun. But you earn that, right? Mike, you and I can sit up get get up and say, what do we want to do today? And we just hire people to do stuff we don't like doing. 
you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but, but you earn that. And, and, but it, in the beginning you have to do, if you're not cutting it, guess what? If I wasn't cutting it, if I wasn't able to take the listings, all the listings, you know, over 10 listings a month, <clears throat> if I wasn't able to do that and I had to do or not, guess what? I'd be out there knocking doors. Yeah. I'm going to hit my numbers, you know, whatever it takes. But eventually you get to a point where you get to do the stuff you like doing. Um, eventually I got in within a couple of years in, in my career, I got to where I wrote down every single thing that I did in a day and I actually have it in my book. It's 46 different steps that you, that you go through on a listing from the time you generate the lead to you close it. And then there's five things that you do after you close. Um, and, and I said, and I ranked them from one to five. One means, you know, I hate, I hate doing it. Five means I love doing it. Yeah. And four is I really like it. And I just re resolve, I'm only going to do fours and fives, you yeah. know? And eventually you get to the point where you, where that's what you can do, you know? Uh, but in the beginning, you've got to try everything until you hit the success. What I say is, you know, go through um, the, 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 the 27 tactics that I write and just pick the ones that resonate with you and just go full steam on those. I mean, yeah. you, could, you could do one of them, like work with probate attorneys, and, and, and that could generate you 20 or 30 listings a year just doing that. Yeah. You know? And then you go to another tactic, you know, so, so there's, I put a bunch of them in there just so that my team <laughs> would have no excuse for saying that they didn't know what to do during the timeline. Yeah. Cause the playbook is there, right? You wrote Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the idea of, of, and we've done some of this too. Um, and I, I hope people hear this. The, when you and and by the way, you you can jump on with local business owners on the platform we're on right now. Uh, you don't even have to be live in their establishment. Although I think, oh yeah, that's, that's a good point. You are. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what 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 people don't understand is the actual like when you're creating content like that, um, it lives forever. Right. And um, so we're, we're creating content like that where we're interviewing local business owners and then we are transcribing it into a blog. We're posting it on our Facebook page. They're posting it on their Facebook page yeah. to their person. So imagine you go to the best restaurant in town, right? Yeah. So and, and, and why is it the best? Because they got the best food. So if they got the best food, they probably have more clientele than anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're a brand new agent. I'm going to call the owner of the best restaurant in town and instantly tap into his network, right? Mm -hmm. I've instantly tapped into his network because when I bring him on live and he shares me on his page interviewing him, people are naturally going to want to find out more about me, right? Mm -hmm. right. And so I'm a brand new agent. I just tapped into one of the biggest networks in town, right, by bringing this guy on. Not only that, but guess what? I got a friend for life in that business owner because I just brought him on and I allowed him to talk about his business, which is what he loves to do. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, and you could do that. all. You could do that once a week. You could do it every day. You know yeah. what I mean? You could do it every day for the best restaurants in your town and, and probably be a local celebrity within a couple months. Absolutely. That's the whole key. Um, you know, be, becoming that local celebrity is really, really critical. And don't don't worry about what other, other people are doing. You know, roll in your lane. You know, God's giving you specific abilities and talent, and do what, do what, do what. You know, do do you, <laughs> yeah, because nobody else can do you, right? Do you. But yeah, you're right about that, Mike. Um, you know, interviewing, and, and what's he going to say? No, I'm not going to. Yeah, you know, I mean, of course they want all the exposure they can get. You know, yes. what I admonish new agents. Um, this is what I did when I got my first batch of cards. I put on their listing specialist. That was my title. <laughs> and so if, you know, even if I had like, I'd never sold a house, never worked with a buyer, never worked with a seller, but I chose to be a listing specialist. Nothing wrong with that. I didn't say I was a mega agent and I could, I would just get on there and say, Hey guys, I'm such and such with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm over here at Torchy's tacos and you guys know Torchy's tacos. They're the ones with the X, Y, Z, whatever it is. And, and, uh, and I'm, you know, I, I'm Nolly Williams, Austin Wilton. I'm, I'm a listing specialist here. Now I could say that even if I was brand new in the business, I could say that. Yeah. And, and people wouldn't, wouldn't discount it or they wouldn't think twice about it. It's like, oh man, this guy sells real estate. Well, yeah, I sell real estate, but not only do I know where all the best home deals are, I know where everything is. I know where places where you can go eat. Like um, I bought a URL, which I don't use because now I'm, I'm kind of dedicated toward 
teaching, training, and giving back. That's what God called me to do. You know, that's what I'm doing. But I bought a URL all over Austin.com. You know, and my whole goal with that was to gradually build it into where I'm just because here's the thing: you, you got to share content that people want, not what you want to give them. And that's the reason why I wrote triple my listings because my my audience was like, man, we just want to know how to get like how to get leads. <laughs> I was like, crap, I don't want to teach that to you yet. You're not ready. Yeah. They're like, well, that's what we want. So that's what you know. And 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 so you have to give people what they want. And here's the cool thing. Or the interesting thing is most people sell every six to nine years. Now it's going more toward nine years, seven to nine years. So you giving them statistics on real estate all the time is it's that you're going to be completely irrelevant to most of your audience right. and boring and boring. So you have to get, you have to mix it up. You have to give them stuff that they want so that they, so you be, so you create that Toma, that top of mind awareness, T O M A. Um, and they're always thinking like, like, like my audience, one of the things I thought would happen, Mike, when I started traveling and doing seminars was that my audience wouldn't want to uh, list with me anymore because they, because, because I'm up. But now, you know, what happened was they're like, man, you teach other agents how to be successful. We want you to sell our house. You know, that's the reason why, even though I quote unquote retired, you know, I took six listings last month um, really? and, and I've capped every month since I stopped. I mean, three, uh, three years ago. I quote unquote tried to stop selling real estate and just go yeah. into full time coaching, but I've capped every year since I since I stopped quote unquote stopped. Yeah, I mean I'm in this I'm, I I sell into others, but but that's because when people see you around, they want to work with you. Yeah, period. And you want to work with them. The people that want to work with you, you want to work with them, right? So yeah, yeah you you've so you know that that kind of it's a good segue into tell me tell. Me, Tell our audience, tell that 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 uh, that broker or agent that's listening right now. Um, tell what does your business look like today? I mean, you obviously been in the game for a little while now. What what where have you taken this business to as of today? Well, so today, um, and and you know, it, it's interesting, Mike, because real estate, man, you make a lot of you can make a lot of money in real estate. I mean, you could, and 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 this is something I pray about and wrestle with almost almost daily, almost daily. Because um, when I was called, it was almost like a minister gets called to preach, I was called to teach. And I remember very uh, um, succinctly when I was, um, and distinctly when I was uh, ramping my business up to 400 deals a year, that, that's where the next goal was. Yeah. And so I hired these people, get, got a lot of uh, marketing and stuff done. Um, and I heard that voice, man, it was like, no, <laughs> we're not doing that. And I was like, man, and so, so um, anyway, the, right now, what I, I do three things. Number one, I um, I do I, well, you know, I still do some real estate sales. Yeah. So that's that's still six figures for me. Um, I do a lot of uh, online marketing. You know, so I became an online marketer, which I never thought I would, but I, I fell into click funnels, started learning that, got got real. Uh, uh, and yeah. that's a whole nother show, by the way, man, that we could do with you. <laughs> yeah, you're, people it. don't know that too, is that you're you're probably a click funnel genius as well. I love it, man. I love it. I I uh, and so I, I I did that, you know, and, and then I, I teach and train. You know, I yeah. teach and train and coach. And click funnels is probably part of that. Um, I own a software business, more solds. It's a it's a CRM. Um, and it's not super robust, but it's got a lot of the bells and whistles that people want. Yeah. And, and we used it for many years. At our, at our team. And so those are really the three things. I, now I teach people to be debt free. You know, people think it's hard to be debt free and it's easier than you think. You know, Dave Ramsey teaches people how to be debt free using what they call what he calls the debt snowball. Mm -hmm. um, I've done it. You know, I paid off my, my mortgage three years ago, paid off my cars, paid off, you know, everything. And um, sometimes it means just downsizing your lifestyle. It, it's not, there's no shame in that. You know, and, and sometimes it doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't always mean that. So um, now here's what it's done for me, Mike. It's given me the freedom to do what I'm called to do. So when I wake up, I don't like I love real estate. So I would love to just go sell houses and make tons of money because I love the game. Um, I like making money, too, but I love the game, dude. I, I love it's like playing Monopoly. Like you just get in there and it, it's just fun, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and especially when you get to pick the clients you want to work with and you just, 
you know, you poo poo on the ones you don't, you know, there's very few people that I don't want to work with because I get along with, with probably everybody. But, you know, you, you get to make those choices. So you're not, your life is not dictated by lack. Yeah. You know, you, you live in abundance. And I, and I believe that that's the way Jesus wants us to live. He wants us yeah. to live an abundant life where we're not broke, you know? Um, well, our show is completely transparency, man. And yeah. you know, one, one of the things that, you and I are definitely connected in that um, life is not about that transaction treadmill. Like, I mean, we have this, there's a sickness in our industry and it, and it is, it is based on, you know, the number of transactions be, because you've got people out there that are living somebody else's dream and they're completely miserable. Yeah. They may, they may do a lot of transactions and they may make a lot of money, yeah. but at the end of the day, they're not living the life that they want to live. And, and so what I think what you learned and what I learned on my journey is while it's definitely, it's definitely cool to go out and say you sell a thousand houses. Right. Um, it, to me, it's a lot cooler to, to, to hear someone come to me that they're living their life by design, right? Or, or to know that you're making a contribution um, to helping other agents hit their goals, right? So if, here, here's where the paradigm shift is, man. So if my goal was to go out and sell a thousand houses, I would need to get 10 agents who wanted to and help them sell a hundred houses a year. That would be my goal to sell a thousand houses. It wouldn't be for me to go out and sit out on listing and buying appointments with people. It would be, how do I help? How do I get uh, 10 agents that want to sell a hundred, a uh, hundred homes a piece, right? right? That would be, that would be a way, the way I would sell a thousand houses today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what I, what I like to teach my group that I, that I coach, is uh, how to make at least a quarter million or more a year, take four to five vacations a year, uh, working 30 hours a week or less, nights and weekends off, and be debt free. Yeah. To me, that's the lifestyle. And like like my wife and I right now, we just got back. We we took we did uh, we've been married 27 years, um, so we celebrated 27 uh, anniversary um, not too long ago, a few weeks Congrats, ago. Congrats, man! Congrats! Thank you. Thank Today's you so your anniversary and your and your birthday. <laughs> Yeah, my and, and my wife's birthday too. So I mean her real close. But, yeah. but we we so now we're home. We were in Bahamas for like a week. We came came home, went to Vegas to do that, came home. Now we're home. We're gonna be home for a solid month. And then we're going to Costa Rica for a month. Man. You know? um, life by design, brother. I love yeah, it. I love, love it, man. And this is the life anyone can live. Yeah. That's 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 what I, I, I try to help people aspire to. So Nolly, talk to me about in the midst of it all, and I, I kind of wrote a little bit about this, man. You you've had success at the at the top level, man. You know you've you've sold, you know you scaled your business to you know four hundred houses, whatever it was, man. You you're best selling author, man. You've done it. You've literally done it all, man. Um, and, and you know in January of of of, of two thousand eighteen, you know you 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 decided to move to this company called EXP and. and so, 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I'm, but I'm curious, man, with all that going on, how are you even thinking about changing companies, man? I know. Yeah. That's a good, good point. Um, because I really wasn't, to be honest with you, I, I was, man, I was so super content. I mean, I, I was, you talk about a fat cat <laughs> and I'm a little fella, but you inside, I was a pretty fat cat. I mean, you, you, you got it. I'm, I'm with a company that has 700 offices, Keller Williams. I could travel anywhere in in the nation at least and teach a class. They'll fly me in. I don't have to pay for my airfare, hotel, nothing. They'll they'll pay me to teach the class, and I get to sell my product. I mean, that is it's pretty lucrative, you know. But yeah. obviously, when when I looked at uh, Kevin Kaufman is my sponsor in EXP, and I've known mm -hmm. him for over a decade. Uh, he was one of the top hundred Keller Williams agents in the world. And when yeah. he joined, I kind of my eyebrow raised, but I was like, man, it, oh well. But I'm I'm teaching and training. I like to teach and train, so it, it don't it doesn't bother me what the splits are or whatever. Yeah. But he got me to really look at it, and I couldn't. I mean, there was really so many of my really good friends. I mean, like when we with Keller, I, I did ten years. I did a decade at Keller Williams. Yeah. And I, when I joined, I, I told Gary I would do about a good three or four years. Um, I ended up staying for ten. You know, paid Keller Williams over a quarter million. Got a lot more back out of it, so it was a win-win. Um, but when I started looking at it, man, I looked at I looked at it in for about a hundred days. You know, I researched it, mm -hmm. and I looked at it in five different categories. 
And it was the company just superior. I mean, like there, <laughs> there was no category that it wasn't superior. Yeah. You know, from commission split to stock options to uh, you know revenue share. I mean, I looked at everything, and um, I just I, here's the truth about it. And 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 I tell I tell a lot of people that are still living in ego or living in um, you know in, in being too close to the culture. You know the culture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A little too far that way with it is that um, there's really no way you can actually look at it unless egos to play because because I can, I could not stay in integrity and stay where I was like like it would be it would have been it would have been uh, disingenuous and it would have been I would have had a low level of integrity to learn all that I learned because I did a lot of research about the company just mm -hmm. to kind of check it off and even if my coaching clients were asking me about it i would know something about it you know um and I, you know i felt like i owed it to it and i was like even i was like i can't believe that i'm that i'm move switching companies but there's no way i can't like i can't know what i know and not and not switch it, it, it would be it would be disingenuous to my family yeah to do it and so that that was what it was man and and um you know, it's just it's just been an incredible journey. I mean, one of the greatest gifts that I've had is that, you know, all the the, the agents out there has been, you know, like like my troop that I that I uh, that I mentor, um, they would be paying me a grand a month to do what to teach them. Yeah. I was able to just waive my fees and say, you know what? Guess what? It was a thousand a month, but now it's free <laughs> because yeah. because EXP is paying me back. Well, and, and you don't you don't even have to pay for it. Like it's an 80 20 split. They get 20 percent. But guess what? They agree to pay me from the 20 percent that you pay them. Yeah. And then it caps. I mean, it, it's just it, it's a win win, man. So so now I'm able to, to offer my my biggest coaching packages for free, um, which I never was able to do before. And I'm all about that, man. I mean, I'm <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm like super stoked about that. Yeah. And, cool. and I get it. There's some people that don't want to switch, so I'm not. I'm not that like super crusader. But I'm yeah. like, hey, um, like like you, Mike. You you like helping people. I like helping people. Hey, if you if you want our help, here we are for you. Um, and you and you can get it at at, at something that we never would have been able to offer before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and you know, we talked about this a little bit before we um, jumped on on live. Here is that yeah. the reason? Like we had. I, well, there were obvious reasons for moving over uh, when you compared the two companies uh, and you know this is not a show about bash and keller williams we enjoyed our time there we really enjoyed our time there we learned a lot and we met a lot of great people um but one of the things that we didn't anticipate in the move was the collaboration and the camaraderie um and the the, the amount of 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 information that we've absorbed and learned we just didn't anticipate that and now that is the number one reason why we stay yeah is because of that connectedness that you were talking about right before before we jumped on here golly it's like and kevin and kevin kaufman would try to explain this to me but i'm more connected now than i ever have been to to my group and it's like um through through all the different tools that we've been afforded to stay connected it's like Man, I mean, like, I'm like soup because because my thing was like, even though I stopped going to the office years ago, mm -hmm. just the idea of being able to go to the office was still in my head. Like, how can I collaborate? Yeah. Guess what? When you go to the office, you know, most of the people that you know that are that are top producers, they're not there anyway. They're mm -hmm. out getting, doing deals, or they're meeting in a coffee shop somewhere, or they're getting something signed, or they're on vacation. You know? Yeah. So it it's just it was just a concept, but now that that we're thinking differently. We're thinking cloud-based. You know, you, you're really forced to do things a little differently. And when you do them differently, guess what? You're more connected than you ever have been. I, I would have never thought it, you know, but it's just been incredible that way. It is awesome, man. Yeah. Dolly, man, listen, this has been so much fun. What I don't want to, um, what I, I, I wanted you to be able to just, because you you obviously, um, You've, you've written some great material, man. And what I want people to be able to connect to before we jump off here is to all that great material that you've produced. How do people do that? The easiest way, if you can spell my name, <laughs> it's K-N-O-L-L-Y, Nolly.com. 
if you go to my website, you'll find a lot of the stuff that I do, the resources. Um, you know, 90% of the stuff I do is free uh, because I know people, a lot of people, either either they're not willing or able to pay, you know, so I put it out there for them. How and, much is that domain worth, man? What's that? I said, you must have got that domain in like 1991, man. That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, there's a guy that's been trying to get that from me, man. He'll probably pay me big money. He he, he has uh, Nolly Bikes. He's been trying to get Nolly.com for a long. But yeah, I got it years before I ever knew anything, what I was going to do with it. I tell people all the time, get domains. I have, I own 64 domain names. Yeah. You know, get, get, tie up. It's it's funny because people come to me and, and I coach them. And I'm like, did you know that your name is available? They're like, no. I mean, first and last name, of course. Yeah. Uh, and they haven't snapped it up. But yeah. Nolly.com. Nolly.com, guys. Listen, if you want to get uh, any of his material, and you guys saw a bunch of that, and it is actionable stuff, man, stuff that you can, you know, you can implement, dive in on right away, and uh, and start doing deals, start start taking listings. Nolly, if people want to connect with you on on social media, um, if people want to to jump on a call with you to learn more about your business, or maybe even about EXP, how to, how can they connect with you? Uh, for that, you know, you can go to partnerwithnolly.com and that'll have all my social media links there. Um, my okay. social media links are at nolly.com as well. Uh, I'm on Facebook, mostly Instagram. I don't do Twitter as much, um, surprisingly, but uh, uh, I love YouTube. That's like my favorite <laughs> right now. But yeah, right, I, I would I would say um, just connect with me through uh, uh, partnerwithnolly.com for that or nolly.com for the other. Awesome, man. Well, I look. I hope you and I uh, uh, will connect again in June. Are you coming to the shareholders meeting? I'll be there. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I definitely want to connect with you there, man. And, uh, and and again, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes out of your afternoon to uh, to drop some knowledge for our audience. Thank you, Mike. God bless you, and God bless all of you who are watching as well. All right, man. We'll see you. Dolly, that was awesome, man.